I've just been looking at this lovely book by one of my favourite artists, Edward Cook. He paints very much in the Dutch style of those lovely barges along the Dutch coast, which I like very much. And here I've got some photographs that we took on that lovely day we had at Del Quay. And, uh, and as I thought, I got a composition for quite a nice painting. And I'm very pleased that we, we managed to get that at the tide was just turning, so we got delightful foregrounds which help a painting. With regards to my paintings, um, people that look at them sometimes, they do say to me, how did you come to be a watercolourist? Well, officially I am a professional chartered electrical engineer, and when I was demobbed from the Royal Air Force, having served during the Berlin Airlift in air traffic control, I returned to my studies and after a couple of years, I managed to secure a position at Imperial College of Science and Technology in the Depart Department of Mathematics, very much as a junior member of the group that was designing and developing the fourth digital computer in the country at that time. It was about the size of this room here, and it had 2,500 valves. And when you compare with today's laptops, you see how far we've come. And after about two years, I then transferred to the Department of Electrical Engineering. And there I spent nearly 30 years. And a friend and senior member of staff once said to me, Robert, you must have introduced thousands to the delights of analog computing. It was then that fate took its part and I had a heart attack. And after good advice from my specialist, uh, supported by my dear wife Wendy, I was encouraged to retire early. I then, of course, was faced with the situation, what do I do with all this time on my hands? I'd always been a very busy person, and so I put pencil to paper and thought up one or two things that I might pursue. And I always liked art, and when I was at Imperial College I used to wander through the galleries at the Victoria and Albert Museum. And I certainly loved watercolour painting. So I thought, yes, we'll give it a go. Well, after about two years at a local college at classes, learning the basics of watercolour painting, I was fortunate enough to meet dear James Fletcher Watson, who is an English watercolourist, a purist, and he lives in the Cotswolds. And he was giving lessons one day, two days, sometimes a week. And so I used to travel to the Cotswolds and with about other, six other uh, students, we used to sit with James on the river windrush. And sometimes I can think of the lovely scene with the water mill and the mill, trees overhanging that lovely river and the distant hills. And James would sit with his board and start to paint for us and we would be looking over each shoulder, amazed at how he could produce this beautiful painting. And then, of course, we would start to paint. And then in the evening, James would uh, conduct his court and tell us the good points and the bad points. And his wife would ply us with lovely cakes and tea. And I remember the last day I saw James, he called me as I was about to leave. And he said, Robert, whatever you do, don't stop painting. And from that moment, I felt that I was more serious about my paintings. I took inspiration, of course, from the great masters. You think of Turner and the way he could capture the light. And it is said that he was the father of Impressionism. And then, of course, Constable, the past master at the compositions. One immediately thinks of the Haywain and those great paintings, all beautiful compositions. And of course, as I've said, Edward Cook, who I like very much. When you get inspiration from an artist, the one thing you mustn't do is to try and copy the artist. Every artist has his own style. And if you give time and work hard, you will find that that style will emerge. And you just hope that there will be people that will appreciate your style. And I have been fortunate and I think that anybody that's taking up watercolour painting, certainly look at the great masters, but don't imitate. It will lead to failure. 
Well, some of my favourite locations, and I two spring to mind. One is the Seven Sisters at Seaford, and there when you walk over the downs, you just go over the brow of the hill, and you see the Seven Sisters, the chalk uh, of the cliffs, and then the river coming in, and the uh, um, customs houses, and sheep to one side. It's a lovely composition. Another one that comes to mind is West Harnham at Salisbury. Uh, there you just walk down a little lane, and as you turn the corner, there's a water mill, a lovely pond area, two rivers meet there, I think, and then we have the ducks and the trees, and in the distance you can still see the spire of Salisbury Cathedral. It's a perfect composition, no need for any artistic license, I feel. When you come across a scene that you think would make a painting, it's very rare, as I've explained, that you find a perfect composition. Therefore, you have to use artistic license. You either add something or you subtract something from the scene to create your idea of a good painting. Now, this is where you can have two artists sitting painting the same scene, but they will be different. And the key, again, is because each artist is painting in their style. And therefore it's important that you create your style and so bring that style to a scene as your interpretation. Then you must only wait and see whether those that are looking at your painting in an exhibition will agree with you that it is a good painting. With regards to my favourite piece of the paintings I've done, I suppose I do prefer some to others. But I would always say one's ever hopeful that the last work is the best. It may not be so, but this is the ambition of every artist that someday, as I've said, he will create really a worthwhile painting. So the last one is always my best. Well, here we are in my little studio and um, I'm just finishing a sketch that I've taken from the photographs we did whilst we were at Del Quay. It was a lovely day. I did think of it as an evening sunset scene, but it was such a lovely summer day, I thought I'll do a very simple sky. And I just wanted to finish a little boat here. I rather like the idea of one there. Just to give me an idea of a little rowing boat there. This is my paint box and my various colours and that is, they're the colours that I use. They range here from Van Dyke brown, all the siennas, to cadmium yellow and there's some lovely light reds and mauves and then the three basic blues uh, that I will use for the skies. So I, I always leave those there. I do these little watercolour daubles almost, daubles. And I can plan a painting while sitting in the evening, if I'm thinking about a, a painting. There's a lot of lovely bright colours here, but very often the English scene will be these sort of shades. And you need to get light and dark tonal values, but you're, you're composing the painting before you've even started. And then I often do, here as you can see, uh, a very quick painting. That's a very quick, no more than five minutes. It could be something like that. Notice the strong tonal values here again. And if, if we look through, there's another drawing of a painting I did earlier. More. These are very quick washes just to give me an idea.